By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are back at the Raging Bull series, the old school magic, the gathering tournament held in Amsterdam, the Netherlands. And, and we have reached round number six. This is the last round of the Swiss after this we are going to dive into the top eight and we've got so many cool matches waiting for you including this one we're going to look at Anna who's playing an Urnum on ice deck and he's taking on Vicente and he's playing black red aggro troll so not troll disco but aggro troll these decks are beautiful now before I start with the deck deck I would just like to mention that as always you can also choose to first go to the games check out the deck decks later the easiest way to do this is by checking out the description below there you will f uh, find several timestamps, including a timestamp titled MTG Games. Click on there, it'll take you straight to the magic action. And in that same description below, you can also find a link to the Raging Bull website for more information about this tournament. And you can also find a link to the Timmy Talks Patreon program. That's patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And I'm mentioning that because if you become a patron of the show, you have my eternal gratitude because then uh, you help me to continue making content for you like this so please consider supporting the show it already starts with one dollar a month okay and now that you're fully informed i'm going to continue with the deck tech section of this video i'm going to start with the deck of anna urnum on ice and here we see the deck of anna so this is urnum on ice now urnum on ice works according to a very simple principle actually you want to ramp up with tempo with your lunar elves with of course the moxa and the lotus all that stuff and then when you're ramping up at the same time you want to play an ice storm take out the lands of your opponent so your opponent is going to go slower you're going to go faster and then you're combining that with just a lot of really good cards right we're playing with three sarah angels four urnums we're playing with uh, four argovian pixies which are really really quite good in a format with so many uh, mistress factories and then you're of course also playing with the blue power you've got that you know white control package disenchant sorts of plastures balance so you can fix things and um, the interesting thing of course with these urnum on ice decks are the differences that players make so Anna, for example isn't playing with uh, Sylvan Library main. I know many Urnum on Ice players uh, enjoy playing with Sylvan Library main because then you can kind of draw through because if you're making a lot of tempo, the risk of course is, is that at a certain point you have no more cards in hand because you're simply going too fast. Um, so it's hard to refill your hand. But then again, I mean, you still have the Brain Geyser, uh, you know, you've, you've got the Ancestral Recall, you have your control cards. So it's, I, I can see this work as well. I'm just curious to see is Anna really going to miss that Sylvan or is he just simply going to walk over the opponent so fast that it doesn't really matter? I mean, this is really a creature heavy version of Urnum on Ice as well. With, of course, the three Sarah Angels, the four Urnums, uh, you know, the four Argovian Pixies. And of course, don't forget the four Mistress Factories as well. So, uh, yeah, what can I say? It's a really strong deck. It's made it all the way here to, to round number six. So I think if it wins, it can still make it into the top eight. So that's going to be exciting. Let's take a look at the deck of his opponent, Vicente. And here we see the deck of Vicente. So he's called it Aggro Troll. It's black and red. And I mean, this deck kind of makes sense to me. I think if I would play these two colors, you know, black and red, and I would just pick out the best cards, I would probably kind of end up with this. Maybe I would add some more Jews and Gins, but of course you have to have the luxury to actually have Jews and Gins. I have zero. So um, yeah, I'm really jealous that you, Vicente, that you have one. And look at those beautiful cards. I mean, it's just amazing. The Sheevan Dragon there is awesome. Uh, but what I kind of mean with it makes sense to me, by the way, that comment is that, you know, you're going to play Satch Troll because it's just a really good card when you're playing Black Red. Of course, you're going to play Hypnotic Spectre because it's really, really good. You know, of course, you're going to play Lightning Bolt, you know, Fireball, Shatters. Um, you know, the Blood Moons also make sense if you only play two color deck. You could say, and this is where it gets kind of difficult. And I'm sure, you know, Vicente, you had your problems finding slots for everything. You could say, should I maybe play an Evanerals Disc main because it goes so well, well with the Satch Troll? I'm kind of happy that you didn't because I think a lot of players expect it when they see, oh, he's playing Black Red, he's playing Setch, he's probably playing Disco Troll, but you're not, you know, you've chosen to go a little bit more aggressive instead of that more controlish route, which you go automatically when you're playing with discs. However, the disc strategy is still close by because it is in your sideboard. So, you know, you could change it like, boom, like this, and you're playing more Disco Troll deck. So I, I kind of like that, you know, it makes your deck 
flexible. It makes your deck difficult for the opponent to kind of then play against because you're thinking, okay, I'm not seeing a disc, so I'm not going to play around it. You know, I'm not going to think about it. But then again, you know, in game two, you can poof, you know, you can see those discs. Um, I think when, I, when I'm looking at this, it must have been hard for you to decide how many dark rituals you were going to play. You know, I only see one. So that's interesting. And I, I understand why. I personally, the thing is with dark ritual, it's a fantastic card, but it's also risky. Like take in, in this matchup, you're playing against Anna, right? Who's playing with white. So many players play with white, right? So he's got a sorts to plowshares. So if you go turn one ritual into hippie, which is a really good play, but then if your opponent has a sorts, you lose your hippie and it means it's it's a two for one, right? And and so you're setting yourself back a card, actually. That's basically what you're doing. And the ritual can be great also in combination with drain life, but you're not playing a drain life. So, you know, you've chosen to go with fireball. Actually, dark ritual and fireball is also kind of okay, but I can understand why you've chosen to just go with one dark ritual. Also, you need to make space in your deck, right? Let's say you wanted to play with three Dark Ritual, add two more. What would you take out of this deck, right? Would you say, I'm going to take out a Shatter and a Fireball? Maybe, right? Would you say, I'm going to take out a Black Knight? Well, you know, Black Knight, again, for the same reason that a turn one Hippie is bad, a Black Knight is good because a Black Knight has protection from white. A lot of decks kind of count on their swords to plowshares to kind of deal with creature threats. And of course, a Black Knight has protection from that. So that makes the Black Knight kind of good. Actually, you could even argue that, you know, what this deck needs in the sideboard or maybe even main is a Mountain Yeti because Mountain Yeti and Blood Moon, now that's a sweet combination, right? And also Mountain Yeti has Mountain Walk, but also protection from white. So that would be really, really nice. I am really curious to see how good those Blood Moons are going to be in this matchup. That's what I'm wondering about. And I'm curious to see who is going to go faster, you know, because this deck is also quite aggressive. It's not slow. Then again, it doesn't have any direct land removal. Of course, it deals with special lands with the Blood Moon, but it's not playing Stone Rain or Sinkhole. That's another route you can go. Actually, you know, Red Black, now that I'm discussing it here, has a lot of options, right? You could go Disco Troll which a lot of people do. You could go almost Ponza, but then just with two colors. So Ponza is like land destruction. So you could go Sinkhole Stone Rain, which is pretty good as well. Um, or you could do what, what Vicente is doing here, where you just go, you know, um, a Black Rat aggro route, you know, kind of aggro. Although there's there's some mid-range in there as well, isn't there? You know, with the Shiva and with the, uh, with the Sangir Vampires. So there are some bigger creatures here as well. And of course, the Blood Moon is a bit more of a control card. Anyway, um, I'm rambling. I'm sorry. I'm rambling. Sometimes I have that when I see a deck and I start at a certain point and it kind of takes me to the next and to the next. And before I know it, I've been talking for like four or five minutes. So I'm going to stop talking. I think we have a good idea of the deck. We looked at the deck of Ana. This is round number six. So um, let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So we have Anna sitting on the left playing Urnum on ice and he's playing against Vicenta on the right playing Black Red Aggro Troll. I believe it's Anna on the play starting here with a duel and a Mox Pearl. There is the pressure, Argovian Pixies turn one. So starting the beating right from the start, turn one here, Argovian Pixies. Let's see what Vicenta can do. I don't expect a Dark Ritual since he's only playing with one. Okay, there's the Soul Ring. Also a pretty good start for him. I believe I also saw him not expect her in hand to see a Blood Moon in hand there. There's another Tropical Island, probably the attack for two here. Vicenta dropping to 18. There's a Disenchant. That is a really good Disenchant. That is really nice for Ana. Here we see a Badlands tapping both. Okay, this is a good blocker, Black Knight. Protection from white and first strike, so that can uh, block and kill the Argovian Pixie. Tapping four, there's an Urnum Jin, four or five powerhouse from uh, Arabian Nights, but look at that. Look at the hand of Vicente. He has a city in a bottle in hand, and the city in a bottle can be super painful for Anna. He's playing with a play set of Urnums that is going to be taken out by that one, while, while the table is moving, by the way, by that one city in a bottle. And here we see a Mishra's Factory hitting the board. And we're just waiting. So both players are kind of trying to put the table in the right angle. Hey, now we also see the life totals. This is perfect. But I'm expecting Vicente here to play uh, his city in a bottle. 
and destroy that urnum, I mean, that would be the most sensible move to make here, it seems. Or perhaps he could also go for Hypnotic Spectre, say, you know what, I'm going to take a hit for four. Maybe he's going to play out another Arabian Nights card, you know, and I'm just going to take the four damage. That is also a line that he can take. But no, he's not doing it. Playing out the city, bye-bye for the Urnum. And he's not attacking, so he's going a little bit more defensive here. Of course, he knows if he attacks with the Black Knight, he is opening himself up to four points of damage from the Factory and the Argovian Pixies as well. So choosing not to do it. And now it's up to Anna to decide what he wants to do. Difficult thing with the City in a Bottle is, you know, do you really want to spend a disenchant now on the City after already losing an Urnum? I mean, it depends what you have in hand, right? If you've got multiple Urnums in hand and, and a disenchant, then it's easy. Okay, there we see a balance. This balance is pretty good. Because, I mean, he lost the, uh, the Urnum anyway. And now Vicente is losing the Black Knight and he has to discard two cards. That is pretty painful. We see a Blood Moon and a Hammerheim gone. And I think the Blood Moon surprises me a little bit because the Blood Moon seems really, really good here against Anna because he's got a factory and two duels. So you turn those into mountains with that one Blood Moon. Then again, you're also hitting your, yourself. But... I guess, he, I guess he wanted to play out this Hypnotic Spectre. That makes sense as well. If he would have played out the Blood Moon, he wouldn't have had mana anymore. Uh, black mana to play, uh, to pay the double black to play the Hypnotic Spectre. Uh, oh, unfortunately here, we see the swords on the Hippie. That is unfortunate. I wonder what that last card is. So Urnum on Ice always has a lot of answers with that uh, white control package. Looks like there's an animate and an attack for two. So first damage dealt to Anna, he's on 18. And there's another Black Knight. And the problem sometimes with the Black Knights is the reason that they're, they've are they become less popular, I think, is... Ooh, look at this Sarah Angel. That is a really good card there for Anna. What I wanted to say is the reason that Black Knight doesn't see that much play anymore, just like Kurt Apes is that, of course, there are so many Mishra's factories in the game, and a factory can now pump itself, so it can block, make it into a 3-3, make it a perfect blocker for those 2-2 uh, two -two creatures. Yeah, Vicente attacking here. I think this makes sense, because he still has his own factory to block if Anna decides to animate and attack with his factory. Two cards in hand. There's another factory here. So now it might be interesting. Okay, Anna just attacking. I want to say now it could be interesting for Anna to animate the factory because he can pump it with the other factory, deciding not to. Just attacking with the Sarah, hitting Vicente for four, dropping to 14. I mean, Vicente needs a terror, right? There are two in his deck main. That would be ideal. Okay, now he's playing out the Blood Moon. And he's got, of course, the two swamps he needs, so he can basically play everything out now. And I think this is a good move. Ooh, and that is unfortunate. Ay, 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 ay. That's, of course, that disenchant that he can play because of the Mox Pearl. And it was the last card in his hand. And I think this is kind of the nail in the coffin here. Unfortunately for Vicente, I understand the risk he took because Anna only had one card in hand. There's the pass. So Anna not even attacking with the factories. I expected him to attack here for four with the factories, deciding not to. Surprises me a little. Let's see what he's going to do now. Vicente just passed the turn. Another attack for four. He's going to drop to six. And there he goes. He needs to find something. Hypnotic Spectre. I mean, maybe if he's got a bolt in hand too, he can block the Sarah and bolt it. But it's not what you want. It's something at least. He does have enough mana as well to kind of play a fireball on the Sarah. If he finds one, he's playing with three fireballs in the deck. There's the attack. Chomp blocking here. No lightning bolt, or are we going to see a bolt? There's the bolt. Okay, at least that's something. Taking care here of the Sarah Angel. But of course, it is a two for one. It's not ideal. Vicente kind of needs like a Wheel of Fortune or something. You know, just get a fresh hand, hopefully a good one, and maybe then you can come back into this. But the way it's going right now, it's not looking great. There's the animate attack, and I'm kind of expecting Anna to, to you know, to maybe have a Swords or another Disenchant. 
There's the attack, so he's offering to trade basically. So he's gonna block and pump. And Anna's gonna pump his trading, which is good for Anna because you know he still has one left here. There's another one. So the factory is really, uh, you know, doing it here. Probably going to finish it for Anna here. There's the pass. Unfortunate here for Vicente. Maybe if Vicente has a bolt in hand, that would be kind of okay. Or a shatter, of course. He's playing uh, three shatters as well. Taking four, gonna go to two. Last turn. Can he do something? Nope, that's it. Game number one going to Anna. And I, I think that moment with the disenchant on the Blood Moon, that was kind of killer. And of course, the Sarah Angel for Anna did a lot of work. Anyway, both players are now going to dive into their sideboards and we are going to catch back up with them in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So we have Vicenta on the play after losing that first game. Are we going to see a Black Knight turn one? Black Knight turn one, I love it. Wait to go. And of course, these decks of both players are absolutely stunning. Amazing collections. So much black bordered good stuff. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Anyway, here we see a uh, Savannah being dropped by Anna. There's the attack for two. Anna dropping to 18. Can Vicente find, for example, a Hypnotic Spectre? And then having the luck that Anna doesn't have a sword. So, okay, there's a Sedge Troll. And I think Sedge Troll playing here without black mana open to regenerate makes sense. Because the removal of Anna is a sword, so you cannot regenerate it anyway. Look at this. Anna here emptying his hand almost, playing a Sarah Angel. And that's pretty good. One of the things that Vicente can do now is attack with the Satch, pretend, or maybe he does, you know, have a bolt in hand. And then if Anna blocks, regenerate the Satch, play the bolt, kill the Sarah. If he has, of course, a bolt. I do see a Shattering Hand. I'm not sure what the other cards are. There he goes. He attacks. I'm liking this attack, even if you don't have the Bolt. There's the Regenerate. And, ooh, there's a Fireball. Okay, Fireball does the trick. So this is really great. I, re I mean, remember Game 1 where Vicente had to block on the Hypnotic Spectre and play the Bolt? You know, then it's a 2 for 1. But because the Sedge has that Regeneration uh, uh, ability, you can Regenerate and then also kill the Angel with the Burn spell. So that's ideal for Vicente here. There's another Sarah though. Lots of firepower here coming from, uh, from Anna. And he's able to play it out like it's nothing because of all that ramp. Let's see what else he can do. Anna now on 16, so I'm sure Vicente's gonna attack with the Black Knight. There is a Mishra's Factory. And there he goes again. So let's see, Anna gonna block. I mean, he's kind of chosen this route, right? So it's like, I've gotta keep blocking. And of course, only two more cards in hand here for Vicente, so there's a pretty small chance that he has more burn in hand. Tapping two though, what is he gonna do? Looking around, playing a Shatter, gonna go, it looks like he's gonna go for the Soul Ring, exactly. So that means that Anna no longer has five mana to play out the, uh, the Sarah Angel, but still has enough mana to play out like Urnums. And yep, yeah, there's the swords. That means Vicente is going to go up to 23, but he's probably going to take four as well from this Angel, so it's going to drop to 19. Exactly, there's the attack. So he's going to drop to 19. And there's a Chaos Orb. Okay, are we gonna see some flipping? That's always nice. There's the flip. Yeah, and then it must kind of feel bad for Vicente that he used the uh, the, uh, the Shatter. Oh, it's a miss though. It is a miss. That is good news here for Vicente. That is really good news. There was a missed flip and Anna doesn't miss uh, flips a lot. So I'm surprised here that he misses the flip. But it does happen. There's the animate. Ooh, he's gonna attack. Does that mean that he's got a lightning bolt in hand? Gonna tap two. Oh, he's got a terror. Okay, so he's gonna kill the angel, attacking here for four. And terror is a really good card against this Urnum on Ice deck because you've got the Urnums, you've got the Seras, you've got the Argovian Pixies. They're all targets you can pick. There's a time walk. Okay, just using it to cycle though. Oh, balance. That is nasty. That is really nasty. Also because of the lance. Look at that. I mean, Anna only has one lance. 
Oh, that balance. It's so incredibly good here. It is so nasty. It was looking quite good for Vicente, but now after this balance, I have my doubts. I wonder what that last card is for Ana. Remember, he, he takes a turn after this one. And this is difficult, right, for Vicente. He's like, I want to keep the factory to put pressure on. I mean, Ana's already on 10, but then again... Oh, this is really tough. Yeah, I understand this decision. You cannot go on just your factory alone. That is too risky. So now he has at least a black mana and a red mana. And, oh, an Ice Storm. Oh, this is the worst possible scenario here for Vicente. Losing that land as well, having to pass now. He's in trouble. The only good thing for Vicente is that the only pressure that uh, Ana has here are two Lana Realms. But still, it's two damage return, passing Vicente on 18, so he's going to drop to 16. Kind of on a nine turn clock here. Or, oh, things just got a lot worse with this Urnum Gin. I'm feeling bad. Before that balance, things were looking up for Vicente. That balance changed the whole situation. Oh, man. And balance and, 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 and all the Moxon is such a good combination. You know, balance and artifacts is just fantastic, you know. Non creature artifacts, of course. Uh, but yeah, this is insane. He's on four. Oh, man. Yeah, that's it. Finding a soul ring. That's it. On the winning here. Oh, man. Oh, man. I mean, well-deserved win for Anna, but of course, I always love to see a game three. We're not going to get it, though. Anna winning, winning here with 2-0. And, and like I said, I think uh, until that moment that Anna played the balance, things were looking really up for Vicente. Anyway, a beautiful deck, and uh, both decks are beautiful, by the way. Thank you uh, to Anna and Vicente for showing their skills right here on Timmy Talks. And this was round number six. So next uh, episode, we are going to dive into the top eight. Now, that's going to be really, really exciting. Now, if you don't want to miss a thing, make sure to hit that subscribe button and ring that bell. Thank you for doing that. And if you're already a subscriber, please um, like, share, and comment on your socials. All these things are free and really help the channel move forward. And then there's one last thing that you can do, and that is become a patron of the show via patreon.com slash Timmy Talks. And you can already become a patron for $1 a month. And for that, you get a lot back, if I'm honest. You know, I'm humble. But I have to be honest, you get a lot back for the $1 because you get access to the Timmy Talks Discord. You can play in the online tournaments that I organize every couple of months. And also your name will be mentioned in the end scroll at the end of every single video, including this one. Let's go to the end scroll. Ich bin der Sumba-Kazik.